Night, Mrs. KJ here. I know some of you are having problems with this lab, so I'm going to go through it. So read it on your own. If you haven't read it yet, please just hit the pause button. Read it on your own. And then go ahead and hit the pause button again and make sure you read this slide. Okay, so basically this is talking about half-lives. The idea of a half-life is that you have a radioactive sample. And after a certain amount of time, the amount of original sample, half of it, turns in or decays into a different element. So unstable parent isotopes decay into stable daughter isotopes over time. Scientists measure the time it takes for a sample, a kilogram, a gram, of an isotope to decay to one half of its original amount. That's called the sample's half-life, or plural half-lives. The half-life, which is abbreviated T sub 1 half, of a sample of a radioisotope is the amount of time required for one half of the sample's atoms to decay into their daughter isotopes. So on the graph, it shows number of carbon-14 atoms. We're starting out with 100 of them. And then down here, it shows how many years. This picture is showing that, oh, all the dots are black. I have 100 atoms. They're all carbon. After 5,730 years, that is one half life of carbon, the amount of carbon is how much? Well, 50, which you can also see in this diagram. Half of them are still black, half are gray. After another half life, after another 5,730 years, so after about 11,000 total years, that number divided in half again. So I went from 100 to 50, I take 50 divided by 2, I have 25 left. I'm going to do another half-life. That's another 5,730 years. That's three half-lives, or about 17,000 total years. My number was at 25, I divide it in half again, I get about 12. Okay, I take another half-life, another 5,730 years. So that's four total half-lives, and I take my 12, I divide it in half, you see that there are six atoms that are still the carbon-14. After another half-life, divide it in half again, I have three carbons left. After six half-lives, I have about two left. After seven half-lives, I have about one atom of carbon left, and the rest decayed into or turned into nitrogen-7. Every time I have a half-life, it's another 5,730 years. I take how much I have, I divide it in half. So 100 divided by 2 is 50. Divided by 2 is 25. Divided by 2 is about 12. Divided by 2, 6. Divided by 2, 3. Okay, now you can't have half an atom, so you can't have one and a half atoms, so you have two atoms left. Divided in half, you have one atom left. This is just a pie chart, which really shows it that the first half-life, you go down by 50%. The second half-life, it's 25% of the original. You go down, go down, go down, go down. Go ahead, you can hit pause and read through this. Go ahead and hit pause and read through this part up here. Hit pause, you can read through this. And the big thing to note is that each isotope has a different length of half-life. Carbon-14, it takes 5,750 years. Uranium-238 takes 4.5 billion years to divide in half. Okay, you can calculate the amount of material present if you know the half-life. If you're given the half-life for the decay of a particular radioisotope, then you can calculate how much of that sample remains after several half-lives using the formula, fraction remaining equals one half to the nth power, where n is the number of half-lives. All right, so this is what you have to use. You have to use the natural log. However, there is a much, much easier way. So let's look at the problem. Carbon-14 has a half-life of 5,750 years. A sample of a fossil shows that the carbon-14-12 ratio in the sample is a quarter, that of the environment. Okay, so one quarter is the fraction remaining, or 0.25. So what they did is they put it in for this. 
honestly, what's way easier is to say one quarter of the original substance means how many half-lifes occurred. Well, after one half-life, that's a half, that took 5,750 years. Well, a quarter of the original is the same as saying one divided by two, then divide by two a second time, or one over two times two. So one quarter of the original remaining means I had two half-lifes. And so that's 11,500 years, or in other words, 5,750 times two. I had two half-lifes. Okay, what about after three half-lifes? Well, now I take one divided by two, divided by two a second time, divided by two a third time, or one over two times two times two, which is one eighth. So that's three half-lifes. So then I take 5,750 times three, and that equals 17,250 total years. What about four? What would my fraction be? Hit pause and see if you can figure it out yourself. So my fraction would be 1 over 16. Or in other words, 1 divided by 2, divided by 2, divided by 2, divided by 2. Or 1 over parentheses 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. What would the amount of years that went by be? So go ahead, please hit the pause button. Figure it out for yourself. And the answer would be, I just take 5,750 times 4, 23,000 years. So every time you have a half-life, it's another 5,750 years. This is the fraction remaining, okay? So in other words, it's saying that, let's say I had a block of... A substance and it's radioactive and every 5,750 years half of it converts into something else so now half of it is nitrogen half is still the carbon after another half-life after another 5,750 years another half of it converted so you can see I only have 25% of the original amount left, or a quarter left. Okay, so then after another half-life, well, another half of it converted or decayed. So now I have an eighth that's still red, or an eighth of my original remaining. That's what's happening. Each one of these times takes another 5,750 years if we started out with carbon-14. All right, let's go through the questions. And yes, these really are all my brothers and my sister. Use the half-life equation to answer this question. My brother Jack found a piece of oak while hiking in an Arizona canyon. My brother Jason was taking a geology class at UW-Eau Claire, and he thought it might be from ancient times. So they ran some experiments and found that the amount of carbon-14 was approximately 1 32nd of the current atmospheric levels. Determine approximately how many years ago the tree was chopped down to be used in firewood. Carbon-14 has a half-life of 5,750 years. You must show your work. You can use the equation given to you. You can use something like that data, whatever is easier for you. And then I want to know how many half-lives it's gone through. I know that's not on the paper you have, but you're going to need that information. Question three, when Jack and Jason told our brother Joel about it, he asked, if you started with a million carbon-14 atoms, how many would remain in the wood? You must show your work. Okay, again, you can use the equations or you can simply do the math of a half-life. So if I start out with a million, after one half-life, how many are left? Hit the pause button, figure it out. All you gotta do is divide it by two and you'll see that 500,000 are left after one half-life, okay? After two half-lifes, how many are left? Well, now we take the fact that there was 500,000, we divide it by two, and we get 250,000. Okay, so go ahead and finish it up and get your answer for three. 
Question four, when our last brother Jesse was filled in, he commented that carbon-14 dated was used for dating a human skeleton found in a pyramid, but it's not a good method for dating a pterodactyl bone that he saw at the museum. Why not? Hint, you want to check the dates of the existence of humans and dinosaurs on Earth on a chart showing the geological errors and use that timeline to compare it to how much carbon-14 would be present in dinosaur bones. Step one, Google. How long ago did dinosaurs live? I don't care if you do a pterodactyl or any other dinosaur, it really doesn't matter. So step one, Google. How many years ago did dinosaurs live? Step two, the half-life for carbon-14, remember, is 5,750 years, okay? Tell me how many half-lives that would be. Look at this up here and do some thinking and tell me why we can't use that for dinosaur bones. If you're still stuck, I want you to do the first two steps. Google, how long ago did dinosaurs live? Then I want you to figure out how many half-lives that was. Email me those two answers and I'll email you the next step if you're stuck. Question five, our sister Pamela was feeling left out so she posted this question. Potassium-40 is a radioactive material that decays or turns into argon-40. The half-life of a sample of carbon-40 is 1.3 billion years. Rocks containing potassium-40 have been around since the formation of the Earth. An argon-40 gas has been accumulating in those rocks since the Earth formed. So since you, the beginning of the Earth, you have the rocks, it has potassium-40, that potassium-40 is changing into argon-40. However, when rocks are heated by volcanic action, all the carbon or all the argon-40 leaves the rock when the gases escape. This means that while the amount of potassium-40 is constantly increasing or decreasing, the amount of argon-40 is constantly increasing or decreasing until a volcano erupts. Right after the volcano erupts, the amount of argon-40 is blank. I need a number. Then the amount of argon-40 begins to build and accumulate again. This is very important for geologists because based on how much argon-40 is present in the rocks, they can determine when what happened. Okay, that's it. Let me know if you have any other questions. If you're still stuck on any, I would be happy to go over it with you.